All right, hey guys, uh, today we're gonna take that billet that we made and, uh, and we're gonna actually make it into a mosaic billet. What makes it a mosaic billet is taking that pattern that's in the center right now and flipping it to where it's gonna be on the uh, face of the blade. Right now, if I were to forge out the billet we made, you're not gonna see that crazy cool pattern because it's on the inside. So we need to put that on the outside. Um, to preface this entire video, Everything that you're going to see in this video, um, I learned from Kyle Royer's uh, knife, uh, I think it's Knife Maker Plus. Um, I'll, to, I'll put a link in the description. It's only 25 bucks a month. If you're a maker, um, there's two things that I definitely recommend that you spend some money on. And that is uh, the Forge series by Jason Knight and then the Knife Maker Plus by Kyle Royer. Both master bladesmiths and um, like... If you actually want to get better or give a shit about the craft, you should invest in your craft, right? So um, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to do it as well um, as I'm about to do it um, and as well as, uh, as accurately if it wasn't for Knife Maker Plus. So thank you, Kyle Royer. Um, he's probably never going to see this. Um, but I just want you guys to know the techniques I'm going to be using to uh, fairy flip it is what this is called. Um, is I learned this from his series. So I highly recommend you get this series. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, just as always, we need to prep the billet and ensure that the surfaces that we're gonna actually be putting measurements on are perfectly flat. Man, you would be surprised at how much time I actually spend at the grinder. All right, so our surfaces are prepped. I'm just gonna measure the width of the billet and then transfer that measurement to the, the length of the billet. Then we're gonna use those lines that we drew out and we're going to connect them at a 35 degree angle. You can already see one of the marks there. So I'm just gonna continue that along the billet um, at a 35 degree angle. You'll notice that like I actually don't do it really much on camera. I was having a really hard time figuring out how to do that like in front of the camera. So I, I end up finishing it out uh, off camera. All right, so this became an ass paid and did not go as I wanted it to. Um, I ended up breaking a bandsaw blade, having to go out and get another one, still having issues with the cuts. Um, I just have a long way to go with my pencil, as you can see. <laughs> Kyle, I failed you. So Kyle uh, takes his billet and then he welds it in between two pieces of sheet metal. Uh, because my cut sucked so bad, um, I could only do one. I couldn't get, uh, the, it wasn't perfectly flat. I was going to have to get rid of way too much material to, to get it that way. Um, but I set the welds and here's what we got. I can't tell at this point whether or not everything is uh, solid, but we're about to find out. I'm a little worried just because my cuts were so bad that there were some pretty decent gaps in between the, uh, the billets. And as you can see, here's the result of that. So there was definitely some D lambs that I had to grind out, but for the most part, it's solid. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Woo! Oh man, this billet looks awesome. I cannot wait to see this as a blade. It's gonna be insane. All right, let's forge this thing into a blade. So one of the things that I encountered were some of the tiles were trying to come apart as I was forging it. Um, and so I had to try and forge weld those back together as best I could, grind some of the, you know, uh, parts out that didn't want to forge weld back together. So I had a lot less material to work with than I had expected um, But which then I had to fully forge uh, The knife which yes, that's cool But with typically you don't want to do that with a mosaic billet um, Specifically because you don't want to you work so hard to get a specific pattern. You don't want to uh, uh, Alter that pattern, you know with all the the hammer marks. So so I tried not to forge too much as far as the bevels are concerned, so the flat should stay true to the pattern, uh, but this is what we got as forged. 
Now I'm just going to draw out that tang so we actually have something to stick into the handle. And this is what we got. I'm pretty uh, stoked about the shape. Came out really, uh, really well considering how much uh, material we actually had. But now it's time to quench this thing. All right, so we got a really good quench. Man, even even through the scale, you can see a lot of that 15 and 20 trying to peek out. Uh, kind of looks like marble almost. Uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome. That's a really good sign to this thing looking crazy once we uh, uh, go through the whole rigmarole of grinding it and hand sanding it. So after quenching it, a lot of the times you'll have like 30 seconds to just make sure everything is uh, nice and straight. I'm just checking right here. It's relatively straight. I end up having to go to the anvil, bang on it just a tiny bit to get it where I want it. Um, and then now it's time for tempering. So I'm gonna temper this at 350 uh, for uh, two hours, take it out, and then do it again for another two hours for a total of four. All right, it's out of the temper. As you can see, wasn't a whole lot of profiling we had to do. Uh, everything is super solid. There's no D lambs. I'm extremely happy with this. Um, outside of the overall length, could have been bigger, uh, but uh, the shape is awesome. This is going to be a really good knife. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time when we're actually grinding this thing and then hand sanding it. That'll be fun.